हो 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 आई एम बैक अगेन टू टीच यू हेयर ऑन माई चैनल एंड आई एम सुपर एक्साइटेड राइट नाउ लेट्स जस्ट बिगेन दिस इज दर्स्ट एपिसोड ऑफ दिस सीरीज एंड वी विल कीप इट वेरी सिंपल एंड स्वीट वी विल जस्ट कवर टू टॉपिक्स इन दिस एपिसोड फर्स्ट वन इज द गुड पार्ट ऑफ कॉल बैक्स एंड द सेकेंड टॉपिक इज द बैड पार्ट ऑफ कॉल बैक्स in the good parts we will see that how callbacks are super important while writing asynchronous code in javascript and in the bad parts we will see that using callbacks can let us face a lot of issues there are two major issues we will cover both of them the first one is callback hell and the second one is inversion of control yes these two issues are really very important and you know if you understand these two issues very well then understanding promises in the upcoming episodes will become very simple for you so please i request your attention and just keep watching this episode of namaste javascript season 2 javascript is a synchronous single threaded language and it can just do one thing at a time remember it has just one call stack and it can execute just one thing at a time and whatever code you give it to javascript will be quickly executed by the javascript engine it does not wait for anything so suppose if we have this code over here so this code will be quickly executed by javascript engine and it will just quickly print on the console these three statements let us see that if i save here see namaste javascript and season 2 so it just quickly prints it and remember time tied in javascript waits for none but what if we really need to wait for something suppose if in this line number 5 suppose if we had to execute this console log javascript after 5 seconds how would we do that so now here comes the hero of our episode which is the callbacks so yes what we will do is suppose if we have to execute this line number 5 after 5 seconds we will just wrap it inside a callback function let's create a function and what we will do we will just wrap this code inside a callback function and we will pass it to the set timeout isn't it so let's just quickly do that so now we have this callback function inside the set timeout and we will also pass 5 5000 milliseconds in it now listen to me very carefully we gave this callback function to set timeout now it is the job of set timeout to execute this callback function after 5 seconds so using callback is a powerful way to do asynchronous thing in javascript right so we can take a code piece of code inside a function and we can just pass it as a callback which can be executed later point of time right and our job is done so that's how callback plays a very important role in writing asynchronous code in javascript so this was a very easy example let us take one more interesting example and you will love it so suppose we are building a e-commerce website and you know e-commerce website can't exist without a cart isn't it so let's create a cart and this is an array array of items that we add to cart so let's just quickly add some dummy items into the cart um let's add shoes right and what else should we buy let's add uh, pants and let's add uh, kurta as well okay why not so these is cart for the sake of simplicity i have taken these as strings but you know how it works in real world right big objects yep so what we will do now once we have this items into cart now how how e-commerce website works so first we need to create an order and then we proceed to payment isn't it so how would we write that in code so suppose if we have access to two backend apis one is the create order api so let's call it as api dot create order create order so suppose if we have this api create order that creates an order right and another api which can be proceed to payment okay so payment right so after we have created a order we will just proceed to payment so with these two backend apis so how it works is first of all we need to create an order by using create order api and once the order is created then only we can proceed to payment there is a dependency between them so how do we manage that dependency in our code because this is an async operation isn't it so here callback can come into picture 
and callback can help us write code for this kind of behavior. So let us just see a very common pattern which we follow in programming, right? So what we will do is we again will wrap our proceed to payment API inside a callback function. Let's just quickly do that. We created a callback function, a function right and we add this proceed to payment inside this callback function and where will this callback function go can you guess yes so we will take this callback function and will we will pass along with the cart items to this create order api isn't it does this make sense so now how this code will be executed right so when javascript engine executes this piece of code it will just call the create order api and now listen to me very carefully we have passed this callback function we have given this callback function to create order api now it is the responsibility of create order api to create an order and then call this function back that way we can handle async operations in javascript isn't it powerful so now let's make things a little more complicated so we created an order now after order is created we proceeded to payment now what if after we proceed to payment after the payment is successful we need to show a order summary page okay and for that suppose we have another api show order summary okay so how do we do that we have to call this api only after we have done with the payments so again here a callback function comes into picture we will just wrap it inside a callback function this api over here and what we will do now we will pass this callback function into where where will we pass yes into proceed to payments okay so now again listen to me very carefully we passed we gave this function this callback function to proceed to payment api now it is the responsibility of proceed to payment api to complete the payment and call this function back that's how we can manage this dependency between this whole flow which happens one after the other but do you see a problem over here let me show you a very important problem that we can face right oh my god a honey we just passed from here <laughs> But yes, let us continue with the code. Hope it doesn't come back. So now we have created the order. We have done the payment. We have shown the order summary. After that, suppose if we also want to update the wallet, how would we do that? So now we again have a API, right? We have again have a API to update wallet, right? So that happens. The wallet will be updated only after we have shown the order summary. So how would we write that code? Again, we will have a callback function over here and we are, where we will pass this callback function you would have already got bored seeing me doing this again and again we will pass this inside show order summary okay so do you now see a problem with this code yes so when we have a large code base and there are so many apis here and there and apis are dependent on one after the other so what happens is we end up falling into this callback hell what is a callback hell so one callback inside another callback inside another api or some if statements and random things happening makes makes this callback hell and our code starts to grow horizontally instead of vertically this is a callback hell right and you know this code this type of code structure is like very unmaintainable you can't maintain it properly it's very tough to manage all this and trust me i have seen these type of callback hell a lot written on production code in very big companies yeah super cool developers right <laughs> So this is the first problem with using callbacks that is callback hell and this structure is also known as pyramid of doom okay you can google it so it is because of this structure it is known as pyramid of doom in programming so now we saw the first problem but now i need your utmost attention because now we are going to discuss the most important part of this episode that is the inversion of control and trust me this is really very important to understand promises as we go ahead okay so please please pay attention please give me just two more minutes and i would teach you this okay so let's study inversion of control 
Inversion of control is another problem we see while using callbacks. And Kyle Simpson explains it very beautifully in You Don't Know JS. So inversion of control is like that you lose the control of your code when we are using callbacks. Now it might sound a little complicated that how do we lose control over our code? But let me show you with a code example. We will use the same example which is here. Okay, so let me just get rid of this callback function first of all. So now what is happening in this code is we are creating an order and now listen to me very carefully. What we did here was we take this callback function and we give it to create order API. And now we as a developer are sitting back relaxed and we are blindly trusting create order API. How we are blindly trusting? We gave this callback function to create order API. Now we are expecting that create order function at some point of time will create an order and will call our function back. Isn't it risky? This is very risky, very, very, very risky. How it is risky? Because this is an important piece of our code. Isn't it proceed to payment? What we did is we gave the control of our program to create order API. Now we, now it is the responsibility of create order API to call our function back and we are blindly trusting create order API. Now we don't know create order API must have been in some other service or some other developer wrote it or an intern wrote it, right? There could be a lot of bugs inside create order API, isn't it? Uh, what if our callback function was never called? Can happen, right? You don't know what is the code written in create order API. We are just blindly trusting it. What if our callback function is called twice? Proceed to payment happens twice because we don't know what is happening created in the create order API. So what I'm trying to explain is that whenever we have this callback function and we pass it to some other function, we are giving the control of our function, right? Our piece of written code to some other code. And we don't know what's happening behind the scenes now, right? So this is a very important problem that we face when we are using callbacks and we as a developer don't don't realize this right i have written so much code and i have seen so much code and have seen this happening so many times but this is a very important and a risky thing which we need to take care of so as we move ahead in next episodes we will see that how this inversion of control can be handled in our code okay so for now, just keep these two problems in your mind and that's all in this episode. Before we end this episode, let us just quickly recap what all we studied. So first of all, we studied that callbacks are like super powerful way of handling async operations in JavaScript, isn't it? The first thing we studied, in fact, asynchronous programming in JavaScript exists because callback exists. Another thing to remember is that while we are writing callbacks, we face a lot of issues the two important issues that we face is the first one is the callback hell, right? That callback inside, callback inside, callback, a lot of nested callbacks and the code becomes unmaintainable. And the second thing is inversion of control that we lose control of our program because we pass that callback function into another function. And now we have given the control of this function to some other function, right? And now we don't know whether that function will ever execute our callback or not. So this invert of control is another big issue with callbacks. So in this episode, you just have to remember these three things, these important good parts and the bad parts of callbacks. And that's all in this episode. And, and, and in the next episode, we will be covering promises. Yes, promises. And I'm super excited to teach that topic. It's one of the most important and most interesting part of JavaScript. And I will explain you promises in a very different way not like explaining you just the gist of it I will explain it in detail in depth best video of promises I am coming up with so what are you waiting for check that video right now but before moving on to that video just wait just wait I have to ask two things from you first is to go like the video right now because it takes a lot of effort to make these videos Please like it, share it on social media because I don't have a marketing team. You are my marketing team. Share it across on social media about Namaste JavaScript season two. And the second thing is your homework, okay? Now with this episode, I will be giving you homework with each and every episode. So 
homework for this episode is that you have to go in the comments and explain in your own words what are the two problems that we face while using callbacks okay you have to explain it in your words uh, trust me that will help you memorize that concept very well okay do that two things like the video share it across social media and the second thing is to do your homework finish your homework right now don't go before finishing your homework okay so that's all in this episode and keep watching namaste javascript season 2 <laughs>